T.D. Jakes and the FBI are now pursuing Geno Jennings for speaking out against his friendship with P. Diddy and his refusal to preach the truth about homosexuality. Jennings stated that following a lengthy conversation with the Black Caucus group of pastors, it became clear that T.D. Jakes had taken severe actions. Jakes reportedly rallied his legal staff, MPs, and fellow ministers to contact the Federal Communications Commission once more. Their goal is to silence Geno Jennings by banning him on all channels and taking legal action against anyone who discusses him on social media. This discovery complicates the current tale, implying a high-stakes conflict between important religious figures. Jennings, unwavering in his determination to speak the truth, will not back down from any challenge. He made it apparent that this is not a new situation for him, as he has previously been targeted by the FBI. Jenno Jennings brazenly stated that everyone wants him to cease preaching against homosexuality. He made it abundantly plain that he will not deviate from what the Bible says, and no amount of money will change his mind about teaching the truth. He's holding firm, refusing to let anything disturb his determination to convey the unadulterated message of the Bible. Tuesday evening, we had a long talk <laughs> with the head of the Black Caucus and very respectable, very polite. He said, Pastor Jesus, let me tell you that this is how it is. The Potter House, T.D. Jake Stretch, have specifically, above all others, targeted the truth of God. He lawyered up, contact his lawyers, and even if he seek to reach out to politicians and whatever stars or men and women of renown to connect with him, to contact the FCC, to ban me off all airways and to sue those who's speaking about him on social media. <laughs> well, that would include the suit going to some of his followers. Not only that, they want me to stop speaking against homosexuality. Hell, we have to freeze first. <laughs> Amen. Hell, we have to freeze over. Now, some of you folk that have commented last week when I first told you how the caucus reached out to us, and someone said they want to get Pastor Jennings behind doors, and he probably sell out and if they offer him money. <laughs> you don't know Pastor Jennings. I'm not a whore, you can't buy me. <laughs> he said, now there are other social media groups specifically targeting the first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're the FBI, CIA or any political faction, social or religious, who's getting paid, or if you're a member of some church, some religious order, man or woman, if you are by any means getting paid to come in first church, you are nothing but a prostitute for the ones that's paying you. Because when religion, when any faction, religious, political, social, 
can pay you money to come to God's house to spy out. If you're the FBI or CIA or anybody, if you think by any means that we are deterred, you know, anytime they want to send spies to spy us out, what we are preaching poses a strong threat to them. If I was Joel Austin, you wouldn't bother me. But because they label us as militant, some people over the air say, I'm judgmental. You know when you tell the truth, they say you're judging them. I'm not judging you. God gonna do that. I'm just calling the world attention to what God said before I was born. Gino Jennings emerges as a courageous preacher who is steadfast in his adherence to biblical principles. His outspoken opposition to departures from scripture distinguishes him, especially when confronted with preachers who contradict scripture. Notably, his vocal criticism of T.D. Jacques, who has engaged in behaviors that contradict the Bible, demonstrates Jennings' unwavering commitment to maintaining the purity of the faith. According to the Black Caucus group of pastors, T.D. Jacques appears to be taking dramatic measures in response to Jino Jennings' brave preaching, attempting to quiet him and ban him from all radios. Jennings' unshakable devotion to truth, even in the face of potential censorship, provides a compelling picture of a pastor who will not compromise God's word or his values for the sake of popularity or conformity. T.D. Jake's attempts to quiet Jino Jennings and ban him from the airwaves reveal not just a schism within the religious community, but also potential bad ramifications for him and his supporters. Suppressing dissenting views risks impeding open discourse and good debates in the religious domain. Targeting Jennings in this manner may unintentionally contribute to a lack of diversity of opinions, stifling the growth and enrichment that might result from a broad exchange of ideas. The attempted suppression may give the impression that opposing viewpoints are not welcome, creating an environment that discourages critical thinking and constructive criticism. Furthermore, such behaviors may cause splits among followers, escalating tensions within the greater religious community. Attempting to silence a preacher recognized for his strong devotion to biblical principles may instill a sense of persecution in people who agree with Jennings' views, potentially producing rifts that go beyond the two preachers' immediate disagreement. In a broader sense, the move to ban Geno Jennings from the airwaves could be interpreted as an assault to free expression, raising worries about the suppression of voices that question the status quo. It emphasizes the significance of creating an environment in which opposing viewpoints may coexist allowing people to engage critically with varied ideas and make educated judgments about their beliefs. The negative impact of T.D. Jake's conduct is not only the potential silencing of Jino Jennings, but also the broader ramifications for the spirit of open discourse, religious unity, and the ideals of free expression. Rather than attempting to silence Jino Jennings, T.D. Jacques might take a more positive approach to resolving their disputes and encouraging a healthier discussion within the religious community. Engaging in a meaningful conversation with Jennings could be a productive strategy to close the gap and discover common ground. By initiating a conversation, both preachers might examine biblical truth, share thoughts, and identify areas of agreement. This method not only increases understanding, but also serves as an example for followers emphasizing the value of courteous speech even when confronted with opposing viewpoints. Alternatively, T.D. Jakes should consider changing his own preaching style in response to Jennings' constructive critique. This self-reflection and willingness to adapt can help with personal and spiritual growth, as well as demonstrate humility and an openness to refining one's beliefs in the face of scrutiny. If T.D. Jakes finds it difficult to reconcile their disagreements, he could choose to focus on his own ministry rather than engaging in a public feud. 
ignoring the criticism may help to escalate tensions and allow each preacher to pursue their own courses without unneeded strife. Choosing open communication, self-reflection, or simply focusing on one's own journey are more beneficial options than seeking to silence dissenting voices. Such approaches have the ability to foster unity, understanding, and growth within the religion. T.D. Jake's determination to take legal action against those who criticize or speak about him raises worries about the possible harm to free speech and the open flow of ideas. Suing people for expressing their beliefs can have a chilling effect, discouraging others from openly sharing their ideas or offering constructive criticism. This approach not only limits freedom of expression, but it may also give the impression that important persons are immune to examination. Furthermore, pursuing legal action might exacerbate tensions and lead to a divisive environment within the religious community. Instead of encouraging unity and understanding, this strategy may aggravate tensions and widen the gap between Jake's supporters and those who have reservations or opposing views. A much better strategy for TD Jake's would be to embrace transparency and open communication. Engaging in respectful talks with critics offers for a more nuanced knowledge of opposing viewpoints and the opportunity to address problems. Responding to criticism with humility, self-reflection, and a desire to continual improvement can boost credibility and promote personal and spiritual development. Furthermore, popular figures like T.T. Jakes can benefit from fostering a culture of open communication and constructive criticism inside their own groups. Creating outlets for healthy debate and recognizing the diversity of viewpoints can result in a more strong and resilient religious community. Rather than using legal means to suppress critics, T.D. Jakes should take a more positive approach by embracing debate, openly addressing issues, and cultivating an environment in which various viewpoints are appreciated. This method not only maintains free speech values, but also helps to expand and unite the group he leads. TDE Jake's strategy to target, sue, and prolong the situation in order to quiet critics may have an unintended negative effect. People instinctively join in discussions and offer their perspectives, and these talks usually diminish over time. However, by pursuing legal action against those who share their opinions, Jake risks prolonging the dispute, making it more persistent and memorable. This approach not only generates ongoing debates, but it also brings attention to the criticisms he wishes to silence. Legal disputes can be drawn out, keeping the controversy in the public glare for an extended period of time, which goes against the normal flow of public conversation. Furthermore, by preferring legal conflict to open communication, T.D. Jakes may be unintentionally exacerbating the bad perception of his attitude to criticism. Embracing transparency and openly addressing issues could result in a faster settlement and allow the controversy to gradually dissipate as opposed to the prolonged public attention that legal action may produce. Jakes' actions may be inadvertently perpetuating the problem, having a longer-term impact than if he had taken a more conciliatory and open attitude. Emphasizing open communication and understanding rather than legal battles will likely result in a faster conclusion and allow the disagreement to fade away over time. Targeting another church because of doctrinal disagreements can cause division and enmity in the society. Instead of creating unity and understanding, such behaviors may breed hatred, damage relationships, and undermine the basis of mutual respect among believers. It undermines the larger message of love, compassion, and acceptance offered by most religious beliefs and may drive people away from the faith entirely. This approach undermines the church's core values of tolerance and open debate. Furthermore, a pastor who targets another church might foster a poisonous climate in which theological disagreements are weaponized rather than handled constructively. Congregants may feel forced to conform to a predetermined set of beliefs, restricting personal spiritual growth and investigation. This inflexible approach can stymie the development of a varied and inclusive religion community by limiting the interchange of ideas 
and the opportunity for collective progress. Such activities not only harm the reputation of the targeted church, but they also reflect negatively on the larger religious community. It provides the impression that intolerance and aggressiveness are acceptable ways of dealing with theological conflicts, providing a poor example for both members and viewers. I heard he, he said that he's 68 years old. He's too old to be a freak. Brother, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Am I right, man? That's right. <laughs> Go ahead and take <laughs> T.D. Jake's reluctance to obey biblical principles and confront the truth regarding homosexuality. Do you know T.D. Jake's do not speak against homosexuality? Jennings passionately highlights the need of standing up for God's word, calling for a courageous presentation of biblical values. Jennings' forthright position emphasizes the importance of being clear and sincere while discussing these delicate issues. His sincere commitment to maintaining biblical principles adds an engaging depth to the discussion, resulting in an impressive and moving tale about important theological issues. In the middle of a storm of controversy, T.D. Jakes becomes embroiled in a web of rumor and conversation surrounding Cassie Ventura's lawsuit against P. Diddy. The legal dispute takes an exciting turn when Cassie purportedly gives the FBI a mystery burner phone and USB device previously owned by Diddy's late ex-girlfriend, Kim Porter. These objects apparently contain potentially incriminating evidence against Diddy. The astounding claims don't stop there, as shocking disclosures indicate that he did Jake's not only attended Diddy's bizarre meetings, but also had intimate relationships with other people. The dispute takes a dark turn as unsettling allegations suggest his involvement in the grooming of a 16-year-old. These disturbing allegations have sparked a maelstrom of interest across the online community, with thoughts and reactions flying in all directions. As T.P. Jakes faces this storm of criticism, the internet is alive with passionate debate, giving a vivid image of the unfolding drama. The various opinions and reactions of people online add levels of intricacy to the story, providing a sense of tension and mystery. The once respected figure is now dealing with a wave of public suspicion, with the digital domain blazing with drama over his suspected role in Diddy and Cassie's legal battle. In a live broadcast, Gino Jennings informed that he had been invited to a forthcoming interview. Gino Jennings stated that he believes the interviewers are interested in discussing T.D. Jakes with him. With unwavering conviction, he made it plain that he would only share the truth about what he knew. In that time, Jennings revealed Jake's attendance at Diddy's parties, claiming that it was all captured on tape. With a tinge of humor, he addressed T.D. Jakes' statement about being too old to be a freak, boldly claiming that Jake had mislaid the public as age was absolutely not a limitation. Gino Jennings spoke aggressively about the matter as laughter echoed across the audience, creating an entertaining and impactful experience. The air was packed with anticipation as spectators awaited the anticipated interview, which promised a deeper dig into the facts that Gino Jennings intended to reveal. And I got a television interview coming up this week. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And I know what he want to talk about. I know you want me to talk about TD Snakes, but it's more going on in the world than that. That's right. Huh? That's right. Only thing I can do is uh, testify to what I see. I speak that which I what know. You, what you see. Okay, man, and I testify to what I see. What you see. All, the, all that other stuff that he's accused of, I don't know nothing about. Right. I, I don't know whether he was doing the sloppy toppy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, <laughs> That's right. I don't know that. You don't know that. I don't know nothing about. <laughs> I don't know that. That's right. I don't. <laughs> Amen. I don't know who he was playing house was, with. I don't know. That's right. I know none of that. Right. But one thing I do know, I do know <laughs> <laughs> That's right. that he was at Diddy's party mm -hmm. because he was dumb enough. They videotaped, they videotaped it with short songs, mm -hmm. dancing, and his family dancing. That's right. He took a picture with Diddy. Diddy laid his hand, his head on him. My Lord. He did a sign language with Diddy. 
My Lord. He sat there at the table with a champagne glass there. Mm. So all I can do is speak what I know. What you know. All that other stuff. I heard he, he said that he's 68 years old. He's too old to be a freak. Brother, that's a lie. That's a lie. Am I right, man? That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. <take> <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Go ahead, thank God. Jakes, I want you to hear this. Amen. That's just a bold faced lie. That's right. Because 68, you're young. That's and right. And that's not too old to be a freak. No. Anytime in the Bible, that's right. they are making babies at 300, yeah. 400, 500, 600. That's right. 700, and they're making babies. Making babies. Man, 68 years old, you ain't nothing but a baby compared to them in the Bible. That's right. So you're not too old no. to be a freak. No, no. No way. I said, lie out of hell. That's right. Am I right, folks? Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. <laughs> 68 years old, you too old, man. That's one of the biggest lies among your other lies. Among other lies. Yeah, me good. I'm going to make it so plain, you have to get angry. That's right. T.T. Jakes recently expressed dissatisfaction with numerous persons who shared recordings discussing claims against him. Taking a bold stance, he has actively taken action against YouTube channels that use snippets from his work for commentary purposes, resulting in a flood of takedown requests and copyright strikes. This step represents a concerted effort on his part to shape the narrative around the allegations against him. This shows an intentional strategy to keep control of the information spreading about the allegations. By pursuing copyright claims, he hopes to limit the circulation of content that could affect his public image, so exerting control over the narrative surrounding the accusations Many people are concerned that T.D. Geek's decision to issue copyright strikes undermines free expression. The truth is that content creators should be able to give valid opinion and criticism without fear of facing copyright-related penalties. This step may be interpreted as a potential restriction on open communication, igniting disputes about the balance between safeguarding one's public image and permitting free expression in discussions concerning public personalities. It draws attention to the ongoing debate about the relationship between copyright protection and the fundamental right to express and critique ideas. T.D. Jakes has received criticism throughout the years for his affiliation with the prosperity gospel, a theological concept that emphasizes worldly wealth as a proof of God's favor. Many people believe that this message undermines traditional Christian teachings and exploits followers' financial vulnerability. Jake's strong affiliations with entertainers have also been called into question, with some claiming that such associations violate biblical precepts advocating for separate from worldly influences. Critics claim that these links jeopardize the integrity of the message he conveys. Furthermore, opponents raise worries about the prosperity gospel's negative influence claiming that it might lead to financial exploitation of believers and excessive expectations. The concentration on worldly achievement may draw attention away from important spiritual development and humanitarian outreach. T.D. Jake's affiliation with the prosperity gospel and ties with entertainers have provoked criticism over doctrinal issues, perceived compromise of biblical standards, and potential bad effects for followers. When pastors associate with prominent artists who live a life opposed to traditional Christian norms and biblical principles, it can have a number of harmful consequences. Such associations may undermine pastors' moral authority, diluting the message of holiness and ethical living. This can lead to confusion among attendees and reduce the efficacy of the pastor's spiritual leadership. Pastors are generally seen as role models in their communities. Fellowship with celebrities who engage in behaviors that are judged contradictory with Christian standards may accidentally express endorsement of those lifestyles, potentially influencing congregants in a way that undermines their spiritual progress. Pastors who associate closely with entertainers involved in public scandals 
or morally problematic activities may be viewed as hypocritical. This view can damage trust within the church and the larger community. Fellowship with well-known celebrities can often take the focus away from the fundamental spiritual objective. Many argue that pastors should focus on spiritual teachings and pastoral obligations rather than spending too much time in social groups that may not reflect Christian ideals. T.D. Jake should have avoided interacting with P. Diddy. He should have understood that such relationships could harm his reputation as a spiritual leader. Aligning with people from a different domain may jeopardize the perceived holiness of his pastoral position. It is critical for Jacques to have a discerning distance in order to preserve the integrity that he is currently striving so hard to reclaim. He should have maintained the trust and respect that his church and many others felt for him. If he had followed the scripture's teachings, his impact would have been unwavering, as would his commitment to spiritual leadership. The consequences of his affiliation with P. Diddy may go beyond simply appearance. Aligning with figures like P. Diddy, whose lifestyle and morals deviate substantially from a pastor's moral compass, has raised issues about T.D. Jake's dedication to the ideas he claims to preach. This inconsistency not only sows seeds of doubt among his followers, but it also influences the public's image of religious leaders in general. Furthermore, the negative impact may spread to the effectiveness of his message. Congregants may struggle to reconcile the teachings of a pastor who associated with people whose beliefs appear to contradict the spiritual advice they seek, creating the possibility of confused signals. Such contradictions can damage the confidence that underpins the pastor-congregation relationship, limiting the effectiveness of T.D. Jake's message and his ability to inspire good change. The negative consequences of these decisions go beyond personal perception and to the very heart of T.D. Jake's spiritual influence and impact on those who seek to him for guidance and inspiration. The evolving story involving T.D. Jake's has resulted in a convoluted narrative riddled with controversy, legal fights, and charges that have had a considerable influence on his public reputation. Gino Jennings' next interview promises to shed light on the situation, heightening the already tense mood. TDE Jake's deliberate decision to issue copyright strikes demonstrates his desire to control the narrative, generating controversy about the balance between protecting one's image and respecting free speech. Jake's relationship with the prosperity gospel and artists raises concerns about biblical values being compromised and the bad ramifications for followers. His relationships with figures such as P. Diddy demonstrate the significance of keeping a critical distance in order to maintain one's integrity. Jano Jennings bravely confronts T.D. Jakes. Jano Jennings uses his aggressive preaching style to challenge Jakes to speak out against homosexuality. Furthermore, Jennings attacks Jakes for his tight association with P. Diddy in attendance at the rapper's parties. These preachers hang out with rappers. Yes, they do. They, they, they show T.D. Jakes hanging out with Puff Daddy at his party. My lord, my lord. T.D. Jakes sitting right there at Puff Daddy's party while pole dancers are jumping up and down twerking and <laughs> Bishop sitting there. My lord. He ain't tell no woman there they loose. <laughs> Amen. So they would call this preaching you extreme. extreme. It's heaven or hell. That's right. That's right. God's way or no way. Or no way. You're on God's side or the devil's side. That's right. You love God's word or you hate or you God's hate word. It. You stand for God or you stand for the devil. That's right. Jakes was upset by Gino Jennings preaching and sent him an email expressing his displeasure, stating that he, along with others, at called the Federal Communications Commission to request a ban on his program. In reaction to the email, Jennings challenged Jakes to a public discussion to discuss their differing ideas and beliefs. T.D. Jakes sent us to send me an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And told me he's at par with my preaching. Huh. And said him and other international figures in America has contacted FCC. 
mm. to ban us off the air. My Lord. We had the media director contact him back and gave a better offer. Mm -hmm. I said, besides getting us off the air, give us an open challenge. That's right. Jake encouraged his congregation to focus on the greater objective and the positive effect they could create together. He emphasized the need of growth and self-reflection, expressing a willingness to correct personal inadequacies while remaining committed to the community and their common beliefs. On Monday, December 18, rumors began to circulate after a video from Tough News TV revealed Jakes was attending Diddy-related gatherings, participating in same-gender relationships, and allegedly behaving improperly with a youngster. Jakes addressed his audience emotionally over the weekend, stating that he will not defend a falsehood from the pulpit, but will instead preach the truth. He emphasized that he will not force others to believe him but will instead follow his calling to proclaim the truth. His statement followed unsubstantiated social media accusations about him attending Diddy's events, prompting his communication team to categorically deny these rumors. Despite widespread charges and social media attention, Jake stated that he will remain committed to honesty. He addressed his feelings while addressing his congregation over the weekend emphasizing that he will not use the pulpit to defend falsehoods, but will stick to his calling of teaching the truth. The emergence of sexual claims against T.D. Jakes can have severe consequences for both individuals and communities. It frequently shatters trust and destroys the moral authority that these leaders possess. Congregants may become disillusioned, losing faith in the church and its doctrines. Religious leaders' ruined reputations can undermine the legitimacy of the entire religious community, making it impossible for them to effectively guide and assist their followers. Furthermore, these occurrences may discourage prospective members from enrolling, leaving a permanent mark on the religious organization's reputation. Furthermore, the bad impact goes beyond the immediate congregation, altering public perception of religion in general. Sexual allegations against religious leaders might perpetuate preconceptions and add to a general distrust of organized religion. This loss of trust may lead to a decrease in religious participation and a reluctance to interact with spiritual or religious communities. Victims of P. Diddy's wrongdoing are likely to experience emotional and psychological damage, as well as emotions of betrayal and despair. The social hierarchy may increase power inequalities, making it difficult for other victims to speak up and seek justice. Mishandling or covering up these complaints by religious authority can foster a culture of secrecy and undermine the credibility of the victim's claims. In addition to the emotional impact on victims, such incidents also have financial consequences for Jake's organizations. Reduced attendance, declining financial support, and legal challenges may put a burden on the institution's resources, reducing his standard of living. If Diddy is found guilty of sexual misbehavior, he may face legal action, including jail. Sexual offenses are punishable under several countries' legal systems. The type and scope of the wrongdoing often determine the severity of the accusations. If convicted, he may be sentenced to prison as a form of punishment while also protecting society from potential harm. The duration of the sentence is established by the judicial system, which considers variables such as the gravity of the offense, any prior criminal record, and the impact on the victims. Imprisonment acts not just as a punishment measure, but also as a deterrent to prevent others from engaging in similar behavior. It reinforces the concept that everyone, regardless of status or allegiance, is subject to the law and must account for their conduct. Overall, the claims against Diddy and Jakes have had a significant detrimental influence on individuals, communities, and the public's opinion of religious organizations. The feud between Gino Jennings and T.D. Jakes, as well as the ensuing charges against Jakes and P. Diddy, 
has sparked a complex web of controversy. Potential regulatory action, public debates, and emotional reactions from both sides have all led to a difficult situation. The disclosure of claims against Jake's has a severe detrimental impact on individuals, communities, and public view of religious institutions. The aftermath from such scandals not only jeopardizes religious leaders' trust and moral authority, but it also has consequences for congregations who may become disillusioned and lose faith. The tainted reputation of leaders like S. Jack can erode the integrity of the entire religious group, impacting public perception and possibly discouraging new members from joining. Furthermore, victims of alleged misbehavior, in this case involving P. Diddy, may experience emotional and psychological distress. Power asymmetries in society can make it difficult for victims to speak up, and mishandling or cover-ups by religious authority can foster a culture of secrecy, further eroding credibility. Jake's organizations may have financial consequences, such as lower attendance and support, putting a pressure on resources and affecting his way of life. Additionally, if Diddy is found guilty of sexual misbehavior, he may face legal sanctions including jail. This emphasizes the idea that everyone is subject to the law, regardless of status or affiliation. In essence, the harmful impact of these claims goes beyond the individuals directly implicated, affecting communities and contributing to a greater distrust of organized religion. Gino Jennings is a daring preacher noted for his blunt and unabashed way to presenting his words. He is frequently lauded for his boldness in confronting challenging issues and speaking biblical ideas without hesitation. Jennings is known for saying and how it is, and he is not afraid to handle difficult topics when teaching. His aggressive and direct communication style has won both admirers and detractors, but it unquestionably distinguishes him in the sphere of religious debate. During one of his live broadcasts, he publicly chastised T.D. Jakes for socializing with Diddy and attending his parties. T.D. Jakes was hanging out at a rapper and twerking party what? that Puff Daddy held. He's sitting right there, old T.D. Snakes. <laughs> Amen. They there twerking and everything. T.D. Snakes right there. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. You see, they want the world to look at them as men of God, but they are really scared to be real men of God as a result of repercussion. That's right. They want to be loved by the sinner. They don't even care if they are not loved by God. No. They want to be accepted by the sinner. That's right. And they don't care if God don't accept them. That's right. And that is the reason why churches are going to hell is because you want to be so much like the sinner, you are the sinner. You are. And the That's sinner don't respect you. Rumors concerning T.D. Jakes first surfaced on Monday, December 18. According to a video posted by Tough News TV, Jakes attended gatherings with Diddy engaged in same-gender relationships, and allegedly engaged in inappropriate behavior with a youngster. The video stated that the authorities had proof from Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. She purportedly settled a lawsuit alleging Diddy molested her for over 10 years. Many social media personalities, including TikTok user Justine, shared the video, which has received nearly 2 million views. It rapidly went viral, making Jake a popular topic across many social media sites. So apparently, Cassie turned over evidence to the feds. Yes, to the feds. She turned in videotapes, a USB drive, and Kim Porter's burner phone. There is also an alleged email out that says a variety of other things, including T.T. Jake's. Jake's Christmas service was live on YouTube, and he asked followers not to focus on recent claims. He stated that individuals who are anxious about what I would say should log off if they expect me to confront a lie. 
I will not use this precious day and platform to talk lies when I have the opportunity to preach the truth. This was announced applause from the audience. Instead of debating, he told his followers to log off. Some of you have come in because you are concerned about what I am about to say. All of you who expect me to address a falsehood can log out. I will not utilize this precious day and pulpit to address a lie when I have the opportunity to preach the truth. I will stand upright, head erect, and back straight, preaching God's undiluted, flawless word, because this is what the pulpit is for. However, there will be the moment, so you can quit dragging people, debating with them, and fighting and simply log out. All you have to do is hit the button, right there, log out. There's no show here. God's judgment is approaching, but you're having too much fun to notice. Oh yes, to even realize it. Rumors circulated that he attended parties with Diddy, but his spokeswoman, Jordan Ora, denied these claims. Ora referenced Pastor Charles Spurgeon, who stated, truth requires an express train, but lies fly easily. The representative referred to viral videos as deep fakes and a distortion of words. The representative stressed the importance of continuing to work toward a better future. She emphasized compassion for the downtrodden, drawing on the Bible. She stated that despite erroneous rumors, Jakes remains committed to bringing about positive change around the world via compassion, service, and ministry. Jake's team continues to preserve his reputation by issuing remarks. Derek Williams, executive vice president of T.D. Jakes Entertainment, revealed that T.D. Jakes attended Diddy's birthday celebration a few years ago because of his connections in the entertainment world. Williams stated that as CEO of T.D. Jakes Entertainment, Jakes, known for his participation in value-based films, wanted to pay tribute to Diddy, the former chairman of Revolt, during his birthday celebration. Williams added that Bishop Jake was in Los Angeles for essential business meetings and that attending Diddy's party was a brief and appropriate gesture, particularly given that Bishop Jake's sermons are carried on the Revolt Network. In 2021, T.D. Jakes and Diddy announced that Jake's show, Kingdom Culture with T.D. Jakes, would premiere on Revolt, a network founded by Diddy, the problematic rap producer. The representative was disappointed with how rapidly false rumors propagated on social media. They cited the construction of deep fakes that distort the person's remarks and emphasize excessive misrepresentations, such as incorrect speculation about Jake's controlling the shade room. Jake's denied having any ownership or shares in the shade room, claiming he had recently learned about it and that he is not affiliated with it. He highlighted being a proud investor in a variety of businesses, but underlined that the shade room is not one of them. Diddy has not responded directly to the charges in Cassie's lawsuit or the three others that followed. Diddy has not responded directly to the charges in Cassie's lawsuit or the three others that followed. However, he has not responded to Jake's charges.